Hello again, everybody. Zeg Attack is here at my WWE World Review for this Monday night, February the 3rd, 2014. Now, uh, the good news and the bad news. Good news is decent water night. Decent main event tonight. Proving that a man who has a cause and catchphrase called this can have a good match with just anybody. And no John Cena. There's the other good thing about tonight. John Cena wasn't there for one of a few where it was. Cena's not there. Cena had an eye injury, so he was taken off of all the house shows, so he wasn't there. Uh, the bad news. Uh, let's get the elephant out of the room. CM Punk. Of course, we all know the story. Wasn't there, and I knew the fans were going to troll the show by chanting a lot of CM Punk stuff, and well... They did the Omaha Nebraska Chan uh, crowd. Decent crowd, and I'm trying to be New Jersey, but hey, you know, that's what happens when you're the state, the city that Peyton Manning yells at, and of course, the loser of the Super Bowl. Hit say it. Peyton choked last night. Delivery or not, we don't know. Anyway, uh, a lot of CM Punk chants, a lot of We Want Punk chants, even some CM Punk signs with that weren't confiscated. There was even a sign that was kind of funny that said, my other CM Punk sign was confiscated. That was kind of a funny joke there. You know. And. Once is a good wall without Punk. Yes. It was an okay wall without him. But. He was kind of missed. Because we do miss him. You know. We did the universe. Because he was. But at least. They're finally trying to push d -Bry After been. After screwing him over for the last couple weeks. Last couple months. I think WWE's. Maybe listening to the fans. As we would see in our very first segment tonight. As Randy Orton would come out, that's when the CM Punk's chance first started, doing Orton's promo, of course, Dirty, of course, being told not to mention him. Of course, no mention of CM Punk's chance, that's Dirty's way, you know. Anyway, Orton came out complaining about being in the Elimination Chamber match, blah, 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 and the authority treated him like crap, even though he's supposed to be protected by the authority, blah, 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 and here comes the authority. Two points is Dirty. They're like, yeah, we're getting cheers this week, instead of boo like we did last week. Anywho. They come out and say, Orton, don't bite the hand that feeds you. You know, we've done so much for you. We helped you become the WWE Champion. We screwed Daniel Bryan for a year at SummerSlam. But we may have a change of face. Because tonight, you're going to fight one of five guys, your five challengers. Throughout the next couple weeks, you're going to see Orton on Warren's SmackDown face off against all five of his Elimination Chamber challengers. He'll face Christian on the on Friday on SmackDown and tonight, saying that if he would if this that if this guy who faces you tonight would beat you tonight, we could consider him the new face of WWE. Three. Instead, he's like, I can't believe I'm saying that, Daniel Bryan. And like I said, I think mean, Dory specifically Triple H said, I think they finally listened to the fans. Especially when Triple H was leading the fans with the yes, yes, yes chant. So, who knows? I think Dory's got a lot of making up to do. I think they're deliberately trying to make up to the fans. You know, for screwing D-Bye over the Rumble, and of course, Punk leaving. You know, the old saying goes, one door closes, another one opens. You know, Punk's leaving could be a bad, could be a, could be a bad thing. But a good thing is, D-Bye and many others could benefit from it. You know, like when Austin walked out, you know. His leaving is going to fill a void. His void will be filled. Because as Punk would say, I'm another wheel. I'm another uh, spoil on the wheel. You know. And it'll get me placed. As we would see as our main event tonight was Deep Eye and Orton. Decent main event tonight. Before we would get to that, we would kick off with a six man tag. Action. Involving Raymond Stereo, Corby Kingston, and Biggie Langston. Team up against the Shield. Of course, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose. And Seth Rollins. I like the comment by the commentators. When was the last time Dean Ambrose defended the U.S. Championship? Same with Big E and defending his IC Championship. That's another topics. That's other topics for another days. For other days. Anyway, uh, the good dying team because Kingston, Langston, and Mysterio really dominated the early half of this matchup. Where of course the big speed. The muscle of Langston, of course, the big high flying moves of Mysterio and Kingston carry their team in this decent little tag team matchup. Until, of course, the Shield do what they do best blind tagging and isolating 
one man in a corner getting back the advantage, especially Rey Mysterio getting bubbled by the Shield. And Roman Reigns is the breakout star here. So I thought Dean Ambrose was going to be the breakout star. Roman Reigns has shown he's the breakout star, especially at this Rumble performance last week. As Reigns would show and dominate over this matchup, probably Rey Mysterio. Of course, we saw a lot of it on the Dory Dory app. And then, indeed, Mysterio got bubbled down. And Biggie Links we get a hot tag. And Biggie Langston against uh, Mr. Roman Reigns. I think doing one move that Biggie Langston did after he got the hot tag from Mysterio, his hand kind of banged up Roman's head. And you saw Roman's side of his face kind of bleeding a bit. And despite that little bleeding, Roman carried on the matchup, countering Biggie Langston's big flying moves. With a big flying move of his own, setting up the Superman punch and connecting it. But just before Roman Reigns would set up, he was setting up for a spear. Just before the spear, Dean Ambrose blind tagged himself in and basically stole a victory from Roman. Yes, the Shield won the match, but individually, Dean Ambrose stole a victory that was set up by Roman Reigns. So. This, there might be tension, because Roman Reigns is, like I said, Roman Reigns is set up to be the big star in the Shield now. As the Shield were arguing, and Roman Reigns' tag partner, Seth Rollins, is trying to be the voice of reason, their opponents for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, the Wyatts came on the screen with a little, creepy little promo that had uh, Harper speaking for the first time that I've ever seen him. I know he speak on, spoke on SmackDown, but I don't want SmackDown. So it's kind of an eerie little point we're calling the Shield Pawns. And Warren was the one that said one at the end of the poll. And of course, we would see the Wyatts in six man tag action later on in the evening and see if they would win their six man tag like the Shield did, despite a little blind tagging from Dean Ambrose on to Wayne. Now, on to our next matchup a rematch of sorts from SmackDown this past Friday. Christian. Taking on Jack Swagger, the rematch from what happened on SmackDown when Jack Swagger lost an opportunity to get in the Elimination Chamber pay per view against Christian on Friday on SmackDown. Zep Colt was there, no funny signs tonight. There was no funny business tonight, it was all seriousness. And Swagger was trying to redeem himself after losing to Christian last week. He had a kind of a rough week. You know, storyline wise, he got slapped in the face by Zep Colt for encouragement. He won his match, though, his tag match, but he could have been a singles match against Christian on Friday, like I mentioned. So this rematch was made. And Cesaro was there, too. Cesaro made it to the chamber match. He's in it. Along with Sheamus, Daniel Bryan, John Cena, and Christian. So Christian would come in, but of course, Swagger trying to prove a point, trying to redeem himself, tried his best with his athletic little moves. We the people. And I thought Kev, Zeb, Coulter, and uh, Cesaro was going to help out. But indeed, uh, they basically let Swagger win on his own, which he couldn't even do despite Swagger's best attempts to try to weaken up Christian, setting up for the Patriot lock like he did. He was setting up for the big Swagger bomb, but Swagger got countered by Christian into a victory roll and a 1 2 3 victory for Christian, beating Jack Swagger again twice in the last four days. So I think Zap called him up some more slapping it in to Jack Swagger. Now, on to our next matchup. The tag team title match, steel cage match involving the Brotherhood, Cody Watson and Goldness, taking on the New Age Outlaws, the Roll Doll, Jesse James, and the badass Billy Gunn. Of course, this was a wee wee match of last week's supposed wee match that Brock Lesnar kind of crashed. Brock Lesnar wasn't here this week, which was a good thing because there was no interference in this decent little tag team matchup. For Peter, TV PG Cage, which was pretty good. And we've seen a lot of Tag team cage matches recently with the Usos taking on Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan, which was the match when Daniel Bryan turned to the Wyatts in that cage match a few weeks ago, and now we have this cage match involving the Brotherhood and New Age Outlaws. Now, the only way you could win this match was to pin or submit because the escape rule did not come in handy because, of course, New Age Outlaws is old. You know, the old guys. You gotta say that. I love the Outlaws, but. They're kind of old to do escape moves, especially with the stunts they would do to try to escape. So, it's mostly on the ground game. Basically, the outlaws coming in. House of Fire trying to prove a point, trying to prove that they're no fluke champions. But Goldust and Cody was 
came in, come, came in like they did on Raw last week, coming in with momentum and intensity trying to regain their titles. But of course, Goldust was pummeled, double teamed, and isolated, and quick tagged against by the New Age Outlaws, basically being a crap out of Goldust, even on the WF, ramming him against the cage. You know, the cage wasn't used for like 20 minutes of the match, but it wasn't used as a weapon, so like 10 minutes into it, when they ran Goldust kind of bottom against the cage. So, as Goldust was going to be over by the Outlaws, with some great tag team work again, proving that while they all won against tag teams of all time, they still can't believe the tag team champions. But hey, one more one is all good for these guys because the fans still love them. You know, DX, baby. Old school DX. The DX. Not the new DX with just Sean and Trip Waits. The DX. We will dog. Badass. China. X Pac. And Trip Waits. And Shawn Michaels. So, as the Outlaws was taking over, Cody Rhodes got the hot tag in. Trying to go for his big move, cross roads on Billy Gunn. And then Billy Gunn even tried to go for the famous, sir. And that's when Cody counted for cross roads and Rhodes came in. And Cody Rhodes did nail the disaster kick on Billy Gunn. And of course, Billy Gunn kicked out of that. Very close count for Cody Rhodes and then a big disaster kick. He took care of Rhodes, but then we saw Cody climbing the cage for the ending. Now, yes, this wasn't an escape match. You know, like I said, the only way you could win it was... His pitfall submission, the escape war to win, did not count in this case, like I mentioned. But Cody climbed the cage anyway to do a big move. I kind of, like, think, I was kind of thinking what he was going to do. I was thinking, like, what's he going to do? Try to escape, but you can't. But I was like, uh-oh, setting up for a big move, which he did. He was on top of the cage, climbed to the top of the cage. He did a big move sort onto Road Dog. Great move. Of course, no risk, no reward. He did try to go for that big risk, nailing with that moon salt. But unfortunately, the he landed pretty hard on that moon salt, which kind of led up to Billy Gunn setting up for the famous sir and the one two three victory for New Age Outlaws. We taking the tag team championships with a great, decent little tag match. I know great and decent in the same sense, but still, for being TVPG cage match was pretty good. You know, the ending was pretty interesting with you know Cody Rhodes nailing that. Moon Salt only to be set up for the famous one. Kind of like what happened with the Royal Rumble ending with Cody Rhodes setting up for the disaster kick on World Dog, but then the blind tagging from Billy Gunn that set up for the famous one. Kind of like that ending, but different ending with Cody Rhodes. Moon Salt went into the famous one. So there you go. World Dog and Jesse. World Dog, Jesse James, and Badass Billy Gunn. We take the tag championships. I don't know how long they're going to remain champions. Now on to our next matchup, involving a guy we rarely see on War anymore. Three of the guys have been misused, besides Punk and Brian. Woo woo woo! Zack Ryder! And Zack Ryder's like, yeah, I'm on War! Yeah, I'm on War! I'm gonna get squashed! He took on the newly formed heel, Titus O'Neil. I think the theme of the night was, I didn't mention this in the beginning, besides, well, I didn't mention Punk, but I think the theme was frustration. I think it kind of took some shots at Punk by Triple H's promo saying that, or you're doing a whine and, you know, whine about the authority, treating you unkindly, treating you badly. Well, that's what they're doing at CM Punk. And then in the middle of this match, Titus O'Neil and uh, Zack Ryder, Miz would come out saying that these guys want war and I'm not. Something's wrong with this picture. Well, I think although Miz is saying it about himself, it could be another hint, hint, nudge, nudge about what's wrong with this picture. Punk's not here. Maybe another nudged and punked a little bit with Miz talking about himself, but it could be another nudge or slap in the face to punk. So anyway, I love Ryder, but I knew he was going to get squashed here by Titus O'Neil, you know, newly broken up from Darren Young. I didn't see SmackDown, but I did read the results, and it's kind of sad to see punk time players break up. You know, I, I love this tag team, but do, don't all great African-American tag teams break up because crime time broke up when Shad Turned on JTG. That's what happened here. The the big guys always turn on the little guys when it comes to ethnic American teams. You know, Shad turned on JTG, and now we saw Tyus O'Neill turn on Darren Young. I thought Darren Young may interfere to cause Darren Young's former opponent to lose, but in this case, Tyus O'Neill did not lose. Despite a great offensive effort by Zack Ryder, he got caught after the. He did go for the Bolski boot, and I kind of knew this setup was going to happen. After the Bolski boot, he was setting up for the Rough Ryder. Climbed up the top rope, and I knew he was going to get caught for a big slam, which he did. The clash of the tightness. Finish 1 2 3 victory for uh, Tanis O'Neill. Trying to find his footing as singles. Wrestler following the breakup and the turn. 
on his former partner they were young. Now on with our next matchup. As we had next segment, which was unnecessary in my opinion. We had Fandango and his little partner, the newest member of the title Total Divas lineup, Total T new Total Divas cast member, Miss Summer Way. Or Santino, who came out would say, Summer Day. Once again with a mispron mispronunciation. So he's like, Summer Day, we're going to pick a person on this story universe to challenge you. Well, I kind of knew he was going for. A woman, I haven't mentioned this on my wall reviews lately, like, that we've seen this woman in the crowd. Last couple walls, this girl from NXT, Emma. With this Emma Lucian sign. And Santino picked her. This is an unnecessary segment. I'm sorry. The staying segment was unnecessary. I mentioned this was a segment Punk was going to be in tonight. But I think they're like, Punk's not here. What are we going to do to fill the time that Punk was supposed to have his time to speak? Fill it in with a dance segment. So we saw Summer Rae trying to do some dance moves. Only five seconds and that's it. And then Emma trying to do a little, you know, a little dance. You know, this this thing. And Emma won, of course, being the face, the good. The, the baby face. So there you go. A little useless segment. Or as I call it, filler. Since I think that was the designated time for Punk to come out. But I think, like I said, since Punk's gone, they had to fill it with something. Now on the next match. We had Sheamus against Curtis Axel. With his partner, Goldberg. I mean, right back at ringside. And uh, Sheamus has been back for a, lot, uh, a couple weeks now. A week since the Rumble. He came back at the Rumble. First singles match. Since he's been back. And Sheamus is on a wall. Dominating the early half of his matchup. Okay, little matchup as he chopped uh, Curtis Axel. But Curtis Axel turned it all around when he focused on Sheamus' arm. We saw a lot of body parts being targeted tonight. In this case, Sheamus' bad arm. As uh, Curtis Axel kind of countered one of Sheamus' moves by ramming Sheamus' bad arm first against the steel pulse, which basically got Curtis Axel the advantage. And Curtis Axel had a decent performance here. When he got the advantage, he had a great performance, really taking it to Sheamus, really targeting that bad arm that Sheamus has been lingering with for the last few months ever since he's the, the army injured at Mind the Bank. So as Axel was dominating, dominating that arm, you know, focusing on it, crushing it. Of course, despite that effort by Axel, of course, Sheamus, being the Celtic warrior hero that he is, came flying back at the two attempts at it. He got a second attempt at the white noise that connected, that set up for the bro kick. As he was eyeing Ryback. I think a Ryback Sheamus match could be inevitable. Not in Elimination Chamber though. Because Sheamus is in the Chamber match. Maybe next week on Raw, Sheamus will take on Ryback. Sheamus, of course, like I said, the right noise. Set up for the bull kick. One, two, three for Sheamus' spite. A great the great offensive, weakening the arm effort by Curtis Axel. Speaking of next week, could be Sheamus and Ryback next week. We have to return them all. Came in next week after being gone after that attack from Brock Lesnar on New Year's Eve weekend. And Betty White's guest hosting. I love Betty White, but why is she on WWE? Hey, yeah, had the Muppets once. Betty White, you know. Makes sense. NBC owns USA Network. Of course, Off Your Rockers is a show NBC makes. Now our next segment, Batista. I told you I saw some great signs tonight. Like punk signs and all. Another great sign I loved was Bootista. I thought I was gonna get booed a lot, which he didn't. But before Batista wanted to speak, here comes a Buto de Leo. Man has been kind of trashing Batista ever since Batista was announced to come back. And uh, Batista did uh, Batista bomb him when he came back on the twentieth on Raw and eliminated Del Rio from the bubble. But despite Del Rio wanted to trash Batista. Batista, Batista's like, listen, Del Rio, I have no problem with you, man. I'm not here to feed with you. Oh, in backstage terms, he was saying, I don't want to deal with jobbers like you. <laughs> Maybe it's backstage, but anyway. He's like, I'm not here to feed with guys like you. I'm here for one thing and one thing only. To steal the spotlight from CM Punk. I mean, to screw over CM Punk and main event of Austin Media. I mean, to become WWE Champion. Because I'm a part-timer and screw Punk over. Anyway. <laughs> so, you know. I'm surprised. Was, I thought it'd be a lot of CM Punk chance doing this because CM Punk, like he likes Dave Batista, but probably didn't like the fact that Batista jumped over him to get a main event spot at Mania after being gone for four years. No wonder that guy that went viral did what he did and smashed the chairs that would end up being on at midnight on County Central. 
which I'm watching as I make this review. Anyway, but despite Batista's effort to try to tell them he has no problem, uh, Bruno's like, I am a problem, and just cheap shot at Batista. Until Batista spine busted his ass, trying to set up a Batista bomb, but Del Rio ran off before Batista could nail it. I think this is going to lead to a match in the Lunacy Chamber. I thought the feud was going to end up being a match at the Rumble, but they would collide at the Rumble match. But I think this little segment will lead towards a match to be made against these two at the Elimination Chamber. That's what I think. At least end this feud so Batista can indeed focus on the winner of the Chamber match itself. The man who wins that Chamber match, of course, will face Batista for the championship at WrestleMania. Despite all efforts to want Punk and Rita Ryan. And Daniel and Odell and Ryan. Now our next matchup. The Shield won their six-man tag early in the evening against uh, Rey Mysterio, Kofi Kingston, Biggie Langston. Now it's the Shield's opponents at the Elimination Chamber's turn to try to win a six-man tag. Being the Wyatt family. Bray, Harper, and Warren taking on the team of Dolph Ziggler, our truth and Consequences Queen, I mean, Xavier Woods. And once again, like the earlier match with the Shield, the good guy team, All truth uh, All truth and uh, Xavier Woods, and Dolph Ziggler got the advantage and nearly going. And I love this crowd saying, we want Ziggler as truth, and Xavier Woods was trying to take down uh, Warren until Harper got in, and of course, Bray Wyatt came in. So then Dolph Ziggler got in, after the crowd was saying, we want Ziggler for the longest time. Another guy has been screwed over, besides Punk and D-Bry. Come on, Dolph, get another title waiting in you. Anyway, Dolph Ziggler came in like a house of fire, dropkicking everybody in this little decent tag match, even nailing a nasty DDT on uh, Warren. Decent. Like, Harper was trying to go for, Warren was going for a big move, then like I said, Dolph hit a DDT, big DDT. But then, of course, uh, Ziggler trying to go for the sleeper, until indeed, uh, Woods and all truth is taken out of the equation. And then, of course, Bray Wyatt came flying in, taking on Dolph, doing a big dive, trying to do a big dive on Hopper, until indeed Hopper threw him basically to the wolf. That is, of course, Bray Wyatt getting a big clothesline. And he did this, you know, the big spider. The, the creepy thing he does with his neck, which was, of course, the uh, sign for the end, beginning of the end, for Dale Ziggler, the Sister Abigail setup. Boom, Sister Abigail, one, two, three, victory. For Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family getting a victory in a six man tag. And like the Wyatts did at the, the Shield won their six man tag appearing on the screen, the Shield appeared on the screen after the Wyatts won their six man tag. So the Shield appeared on the screen saying that Wyatts, you call us pawns, well, we're all the Shield and we're all united. So apparently Ambrose and Reigns have settled the differences at their little collision after the blind tag by Ambrose. In their six man tag early in the evening. So, in my opinion, I think this match was kind of rushed. At the D by turn, I think this match is destined for Mania. Shield against Wyatt at Mania. I know I saw a sign last week that led towards the decision. I, I, I was hoping for this match, but to have this match like this, like, it's like, like two of the most recently great factions face off against each other in a pay per view, like in a limited chamber, is kind of a bad decision. Should be a mania. But I think the whole d by push kind of sh shuffled the things a bit. at Because it's d by and y fans was last longer than it did. So I think they kind of pushed things forward. And the Wyatts, maybe they wanted Wyatts and shield that mania. But then the whole d by thing kind of screwed everything up. He got pushed forward to the Liberty Chamber. But should be an interesting six-man tag nonetheless at the Chamber pay-per-view. Speaking of matches, I think that could play, take place at the pay-per-view besides seeing uh, Batista and Del Rio. We could see Naomi taking on AJ for the Divas Championship, unless they want to save that for WrestleMania. Unless they want some silly-ass Divas six-man tag, six Divas tag instead of a title match. Speaking of AJ, she would be in this matchup, at least commentating pretty good, against, in this match against Oksana and Naomi. Actually, not, not bad of a Divas match. For Divas match, was okay. It was, everybody would say this, a Divas match was longer than a Knockouts match. If you saw, if you didn't see my TNA review, and been, me, hear me say about Knockouts being better than Divas, a Knockouts match on Thursday was shorter than, was as 
short as a Divas match. The Divas match was longer than the Nutcuts. I think it was like W's way of saying, ha ha, TNA, you think we put on short matches? You put on short Divas matches. We got long Divas matches. Anyway, um, Oksana tried to, try to bash, but of course, Naomi, I'm giving Naomi credit. Naomi's a decent athlete. I think Naomi could be pushed for a title one. She has pinned AJ twice in tag team matches. And uh, there was a big hit from Oksana as uh, Lisa, Fo uh, Lisa Fox was at ringside. But as uh, uh, Naomi was going for a big move, Naomi got stomped on by Oksana. And you can tell that hood when uh, Oksana stomped on one side of uh, Naomi's face. And Naomi was like like grabbing her eye and she was like out of it. You know, despite that, she did go for like a big move to the top hole that set up the victory. But you can tell she wasn't her usual self. She really got hurt after that big stump from Oksana. That, that really hurt. And as she was celebrating with Cameron, you can tell she wasn't her usual self. She was like trying to dance, but she was still recovering from that big stump from Oksana. So now you're going to fight that. Naomi with the victory. And even, even a post-match attack, Naomi did nail the real V at the end. I do like that move, though. Kind of a silly little move, but I like it nonetheless. Now on to a very decent main event matchup. Non-title, of course. The first of five matches involving all five of the all the challenges of the Elimination Chamber match taking on Orton in singles matches. Like I said, he'll take on Christian Friday. I bet you he'll probably take on either Cena or Cesaro on Monday. And then he'll face the other one on SmackDown. And of course, the fifth guy he'll face on Raw before the Chamber on February the 17th. Now, like I said, Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton. Great main event. Now, if you see my stuff, I've always said that two guys can have a good match with just about anybody. Lee Bryan and Sam Punk, who's no longer here, of course. Unless he decides to come back, but we won't. Time will tell on that. Now, this match is pretty good. I like the story about... I told you earlier in the evening when Sheamus' battle was targeted by uh, Curtis Axe or their match. Well, this match, Orton and Lee Bryan focused on an injury. Weaken the body part. Dean Bryan would carry the later half first match of the matchup. There were some great spots when D Bryan took over. Uh, Dean Bryan was, of course, on a wall despite Owen's best efforts to try to go make things go his way early until D Bryan. Basically, the the thing that made D Bryan carry the matchup and get the advantage was when he put Randy Owen's legs against the post and really kicked them until he went for like a running drop kick, like here's Owen against the Owens foot against the steel. Here's D-Bry coming out of big, big flying running drop kick to Owens' knees and the steel steps, the steel steel step, the steel pulse. That's what set up D Bry to die on Orton and really targeting on that bad knee. That was of course a target and he really weakened on it. Another great spot and a funny spot was as Owen was getting pulled by uh D Bry, he got tossed into the announce table. It kind of made uh, Michael Cole's headset go off. I wish they permanently let that off. Obviously, probably did not plug his headset back in, so we won't even hear any. So we won't have to hear any more WF plugs. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, but as D Boy came into focus, of course, like I said, turn around was fair play. We saw D Boy focus on an injured body part, focusing on that bad knee of Orton. Orton would later find a bad place for D Boy to focus on. An arm is on after a vicious. Side suplex on the steel barricade. Old came flying back, focusing on the in, focusing on the arm of Mr. Bryan. No, not to set up the cross up breaker like that. We, he was just pulling on that arm. And it was a decent matchup, very back and forth matchup between these guys, focusing on the body part that each guy was focusing on. You know, Orton focusing on D. Bryan's arm, and like I said, D. Bryan focusing on Orton's leg. And both guys were gunning it out. You know, Orton would go over the big move, the D. Bryan would counter. You know, you know, knee bike came flying back with his high flying moves and flying headbutt and all this stuff despite a bad home injury. And interference by Kane. We would see Kane get involved mid range towards the end of this matchup as D Bar was gaining momentum after a big headbutt. And eventually, after the DDT by Orton, the side DDT, I knew Orton was going to set up for the RKO, but D Bar would come back, countering into the yes lock. I like that counter to the yes lock that he did. And also, the movie he did, he was trying to set up the, the surfboard, Orton was blocking it. And then D-Bry just stomped and wiggling that leg even more. But like I said, as D-Bry came back with the headbutt, here comes Kane coming in. 
And then Kane got taken down by d -Bike. Of course, Kane and Brian, former tag team champion partners. But now Kane's corporate. So as Kane was taken down, I had that drop kick by d -Bike. d -Bike went for the flying move. The springing splash of the middle rope under both d -Bike's opponent, Orton and Kane. And of course, Orton would be pummeled and Kane would be taken out of the equation. But despite Kane's interference, d -Bike would come back strong. Coming back from that distraction by Kane, but Ray Yoon was trying to take advantage of that Kane distraction. After Kane got taken out by D Bright, that distraction was taken out. I was like fearing that Orton was going to come in after D Bright got back in the ring and set up for the all care of that distraction from Kane. Well, that's exactly almost what happened. After D Bright took care of Kane, he walked in back into the ring. Orton was trying to set up the all care. Oh, D Bright did counter it and went for the big flying knee to the head and won. Two, three, victory for Daniel Bryan pinning the WWE Champion. Could be a sign of things to come that WWE could finally listen to the fans. But like they've done many times before, unfortunately. When WWE does one good thing, they fuck it up by doing something stupid. Once again, in d Bryan's glory, once again they pummel his ass after the matchup. With Randy Orton and Kane pummeling on d Bryan after the matchup. Setting up a Kane choke slam in the pool's match attack. Despite D Bryan's victory, D Bryan wasn't the last one standing as Kane and Orton would stand on top of a fallen D Bryan after that post match attack as we would end the wall. So, I love D Bryan winning it all, but once again, like Dory likes to do best, they fucked D Bryan over by having another post match attack on his ass after a victory, stealing his glory. But the good thing we can take from this is that this could be a sign of things to come that W may finally listen to the fans and finally push d by the way we want it. That the Yes movement may have finally taken effect in the backstage area of WWE, especially with Punk being gone. So there you go. Yes, yes indeed. d by victory in a very good, decent main event. It was actually the oldest match I've seen in a while. I think d by made him perform good. Like I said, d by can have a good match with just about anybody. That is it for my uh, WWE Wall review for this evening. Thank you all very much for watching. With that in mind, you've all been attacked by the review. Thumbs up. See you all later, everybody. Yes. Yes. Yes.